This video is about choosing a vacuum pump for vacuum bagging composites. There are a lot of choices. I'm going to go through a bunch here. But first, what is vacuum? Vacuum is space that's completely empty, devoid of matter. There's nothing in it. But first we need to talk about something that does have matter in it, but doesn't look like it. The atmosphere. The atmosphere is heavy. It presses down on one square foot of the surface of the Earth with more than 2,000 pounds. That's like a really tiny car. The weight of the atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure. And when you pull a vacuum inside a volume, you're removing all the air. So there's no pressure working out, but the atmosphere is still pressing in. And that's how vacuum bagging works. Here's an example. I'm going to pull all the air out from under this piece of plastic film, and it sucks right down to the table, and the atmosphere pushes down on that part. But to do that, we're going to need a vacuum pump. But what type of vacuum pump do you need? For wet layup, you don't really need high vacuum. It's nice to be able to throttle it. For infusion, you will need high vacuum, but you may need to use lower vacuum later in the process. And for prepregs, you just want as much vacuum as you can get. And hopefully, you won't need much volume. Here are six different vacuum pumps that you might choose for composites work. A couple different kinds. These are oil-free low vacuum pumps. And these are oil lubricated high vacuum pumps. The first pump we're going to look at is a little gassed diaphragm pump. This runs on 110 power, has a little handle for carrying it around. It's also an air compressor. So if you plumb your hose into one side, you get pressure. On the other side, you get vacuum. And it's a handy little unit. It's not very loud, and it pulls pretty decent vacuum. This is a great pump for bag wet layup and some type parts of infusion where you need to regulate vacuum. And with that little knob, you could adjust the vacuum down to about 25 inches of mercury or 100 and something bar here, which is pretty good. This next pump is a gassed dry rotary vein pump. It actually needs to be rebuilt, so it's not going to pull the vacuum that it says it will pull. If you look at the data sheet, this pump's veins aren't in great shape. And if you wait till the end of the video, I'll show taking the front off this one and checking out the veins inside. Um, it's a nice pump. It's got adjustable vacuum level. And it pulls about the same vacuum as that small diaphragm pump. The third pump is a larger Becker. This is about the biggest pump that will run on 110 power. This is also a dry rotary vein pump. Very similar to the last one we saw. It has that knob on the front. It allows you to adjust the vacuum level. It has also got an inlet filter, that black can on top, and a valve. So I'm going to plug the gauge in here. And this is a higher volume pump than the others. This is nice for doing wet layup um, and general all-around good pump to have. This tiny little one is an Edwards high vacuum pump. This is a rotary vein pump, but where the veins run in oil, so it pulls much higher vacuum than the dry pumps. And you can see my gauge needs calibration. We're at negative two millibar. And it also has a gas ballast, which allows you to bleed in a little bit of air as the pump runs to allow moisture to pass out of the oil. Uh, this is a tiny pump. But it's a nice little unit for doing pre-preg or something where there's not a lot of moisture or volume. This next pump is a Gardner Denver high vacuum oil rotary vein pump as well. This one, though, on the side has that big rectangular oil filter, which filters out the oil mist from the exhaust. And this little blue filter does the same. This is a 110 volt pump 
and it's nice for doing pre-preg or infusion. It's a very versatile little pump. Again, has a check valve and an inlet filter. Looking at this, pulls pretty good vacuum down around 12 millibar, which is well into the 29s. Inches of and this last pump, very similar to the Gardner Denver, is a Bush. This one's quite a bit bigger. It runs on 220 power, so I'm not going to be able to run it on the bench here. But it has a lot more capacity in terms of volume and also a removable and changeable oil outlet filter and an inlet filter as well with a valve. It's good to have a valve on these pumps so that when you release the vacuum, it doesn't backflow and turn the pump in the opposite direction, which can ruin the veins. So if we take this one over to the floor near a plug and run it. It's a bit louder. This is a great general purpose pump for pre-preg, infusion, wet layup, and it pulls nice vacuum. We're going to compare the pumps using two metrics, cubic feet per minute and inches of mercury. And the small Edwards pump has a very high vacuum and a very small volume. And the small gas pump, very small volume and also a lower level of vacuum. And this spreadsheet here shows the different pumps as well as different measures of vacuum, including PSI, which is a measure of positive pressure, and inches of mercury, tor, millibar, and bar for each of the pumps. Now let's talk about something you probably don't want for vacuum. This is a rotary blower. They're used for hold down and vacuum fixtures or air in fish tanks, a lot of other stuff. They move a lot of air, but at a very low pressure. So while this will pull a vacuum, it won't pull very much, and it's probably not a good idea for vacuum bagging. And of course, for each of these pumps, they make them bigger. This is a big oil rotary vein and a large, dry rotary vein pump, and they get bigger than that. And because it's fun to see how things work, I'm going to take apart this little gassed pump that needs a rebuild. We'll be able to see how the inside works. It's very simple. And the oiled rotary vein pumps work pretty much exactly the same way, except these veins we're about to see on the inside work in an oil bath. So the oil seals the veins against the um, outside surface and allows for a much higher level of vacuum. So what I'm going to do with a rebuild kit on this is replace the veins, which are made of a um, e-glass laminate. Um, you can see in there it's just attached to the end of the shaft of the motor, offset in that cavity, and the vein centrifugal force pulls the veins out and they make contact with the outside, and they move the air around and pull it from one side to the other. And you can imagine that all full of oil and how much better the seal would be. And that's how the oiled rotary vein pumps work. But it's pretty much the same idea. You know, the veins, they just pull out. These are pretty worn. But when I put new ones in, it should be down to the 100 millibar, 25 inches of mercury range with this pump. And I put it back together. And surprisingly, it actually worked. And still pulled the same not ideal 300 and something millibar vacuum. Please have a look at the article on the Explore Composites website for more information and for the charts that were shown here very quickly. I hope this was helpful and thanks for checking it out.